Well, we kick off the second half of the frenzy with Red Line and Dallas Town. Neighbors and rivals, and you pull everything out of the playbook in a game like this. Couple of pitches leads to an option pass back to Chris Price. Moves the chains. Wildcats hold and keep Red Line out of the end zone. That is until their own defense. Here comes the rush. Cody Kisner goes down for a safety. The offense kicks it on for both sides. First, it's the Lions. Senior Elijah Morales appears to slow down until he breaks free and glides past the Cats in for six. D-Town will answer through the air. It's Kisner with a pretty connection to Jalen Cook. Goes up to get it. Comes down with a score. Just what a rivalry game should be. It's a thriller. Home team earns bragging rights for a year. The final, 27-25. Dallas Town. Well, they are the defending state champs. No surprise to see Steel High sport a 9-0 record. West Perry in the same situation. Nine games, nine wins. The Rollers caught in traffic from an accident, but they arrive late and it doesn't affect their focus. Lindsey Barna travels to Perry County for our live Frenzy pregame show and sticks around to show us which team is now a perfect 10. teams you know there's going to be fireworks only one walks away mid Penn capital champs and an undefeated regular season on steel high's first drive the rollers on a fourth and 19 from the mustang 44 coach irby decides to go for it. west perry with the pressure they come up with the stop now west perry's first drive they can only gallop so far ian goodling gets the mustangs on the board first with a 35 yard field goal 40 seconds into the second quarter, Rollers quarterback Alex Irby connects with James Evans, the third. He gets his two feet in as Steel High takes the lead 7-3. Westbury knocks three and a half minutes off the clock on their next drive once again, having to settle for a field goal. Goodling is good from 34 yards out, Mustangs down by one. On the ensuing drive, the Rollers back in the red zone. Irby decides to keep it himself. Steel High up 14-6. West Perry has 234 left to play, but why waste it? On the first play of their next drive, quarterback Marcus Quaker launches it to Bryce Smith. He makes it all the way down to the two yard line. Coach Bowden wants to talk about this one. Quaker then keeps it himself for a Mustang touchdown, two point conversion, no good, so they trail 12 14. Then on the first play of the next drive, Irby hands off to Ronald Burnett. Chug a chug, and he steams his way down just outside the red zone. Three plays later, Irby to Darrell Caesar Jr. Extra point, no good. West Perry tries to score one more before half. Quaker's ball goes deep into the end zone. Caesar Jr. wins the 50-50 ball, and the Rollers lead 20-12 at the half. The Mustangs open the second half, marching down the field, but a 42-yard field goal just misses wide. The Rollers keep West Perry scoreless the rest of the game. They tack on two more touchdowns to win 33-12 and end the regular season with a perfect 10-0 record. That was a really good football team, and um, I like the way we fought and came back when we faced adversity. Like we talked about, we don't surrender. For the Frenzy, Lindsey Barna, Fox 43. Thanks, Lindsay. Now to East Pennsboro, where the Panthers host Waynesboro. A relatively young series, only the 10th meeting between the two. Last year's game decided by only a field goal. Indians win at 13-10. This, a different East Penn squad, though, and they are primed and ready for the regular season finale. Oh, I wasn't lying. Told you they're primed and ready to go. East Penn with the ball. Keith Oates, the third, completes the 25-yard pass to Brecken Swope right down the middle of the coverage. Nice connection there. Then they go ahead and complete the drive. Oates with a six-yard toss to Paul Sanderson on the far side. And that six-yard toss is good for six points. Waynesboro then counters. A lot of pressure up the middle. Hey, let's go with the middle screen. Rayshon Frazier Hewitt completes a 15-yarder there. And let's the... The coverage, the sacks, the guys coming in trying to get the sack and then flips it over their head. It's good for 15 yards to Anthony Osherman. A wild sequence here with the Indians trying to score. The Panthers defense has to stay patient, stays with their coverage, and then comes up with the big goal line stand and knock it down. Terrell James defends the pass. The final is 38-12 East Pennsboro. Well, now it's time for a pair of mid-pen matchups, both with some good history behind them. We hand things off to Evan Brooks to tell us about Cedar Cliff against Milton Hershey and Harrisburg versus Central Dolphin. Two playoff-bound teams, Milton Hershey and Cedar Cliff, get together for the final contest of the regular season. First drive for Milton Hershey, Jason Burney hits Paris Blackston. He tries to cut up field, but the Colts come in and knock it loose. 
it's a fumble, and they recover in plus territory. That leads to this, Eric Shriver gets the carry, locates the hole, gets skinny, and bursts up the middle, right through the Milton Hershey defense. It's a touchdown, and it's 7-0 Colts. But the Spartans would respond. This time, Bernie hits Najir Control on the screen, and he does the rest, gets behind his blockers, and squirts into the end zone, and that cuts the Colts' lead to just one. But the Cedar Cliff run game proves to be too tough. Drivers burst through the defense once again and crosses the plane for the score as Cedar Cliff gets the win 54 to 18. It's the final. We pop over to Landis Field where Harrisburg and Central Dolphin renew their rivalry in a game that's always full of big plays. We pick this one up in the second half. Nehemiah Yule shows off his power, bounces off a couple of tacklers, and extends the Cougars lead to 25. Then the Rams try to respond. Kron Plummer keeps it on the read option, gets to the outside and finds some daylight right up the middle. He punches it in as Central Dolphin cuts into the Harrisburg deficit. But Harrisburg just too much on offense. Sean Lee puts it away with this one yard quarterback keeper as the Cougars win 47 to 21 and claim the mid pin Commonwealth crown. Uh, really it all starts in practice. This is a good game to go in the playoffs with. It showcased a lot of our skills and what our guys can do, so that's a good thing. A conference title, the perfect way to close the regular season with district play now on the horizon. Reporting for the Frenzy, I'm Evan Brooks. Thank you, Evan, and thanks to Seth and Carolina for hooking us up with Carlisle highlights all season long. The Herd hosting CD East Panthers get things going. Screen pass to Naquan Prather. He showcases the speed and then watch them slam on the brakes. Dodge defender. He's gone. Central Dauphine strikes first. Thundering Herd respond with a touchdown pass of their own. Lucas Smith to one of his favorite targets. Carson Swartz hits him in stride for the touchdown. CD East, though, had plenty of firepower in this one. They pick up the 44 to 24 W. Mifflin County leads Redland, but here come the Patriots. Quinlan Shear dropping a dime to Brady Saylor, who to the back corner of the end zone. The rally is on for Redland. Shearer back with more. This time he's going to find Josh Patrick for another touchdown as Redland takes the late lead. The Huskies, though, get back to the ground game. Deacon Schaefer becomes the all-time leading rusher in Mifflin County history. Here he does, picking up the 10-yard gainer on the first down. Then the Huskies line up for the game-winning field goal. Isaac Parks' Guild's kick is true. Mifflin County wins it 22-19. to that is clutch right there. If you have a photo that we missed, text it to us at 717-843-0043. You might see a pop up here on the High School Football Frenzy, or we may even show it on the Sunday Sports Frenzy. And if you missed any of the action tonight, last week or last month, you're in luck because it's all waiting for you in one spot. Fox43.com slash HSFF. We've got all your highlights, post-game interviews, and finals from this season and seasons past right there waiting for you in one convenient spot. And there you have it, fellas, week number 10. A lot of really good, interesting games there. Yeah, last night's games now, right? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Mifflin County clutch, that's the time you want to be clutch. Yep. Late in the year, and I am so excited for the postseason. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming quickly. All right, for the entire high school football frenzy team, we'll be ready to go for the playoffs next week. Thanks for staying up late with us. Yeah. We'll see you next time.